Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we, if, if, if I can, can we chant a little bit? Because they really want to yes. shake your hands. <laughs> no. Oh, you want me to? No, no, no. Okay. Like, when, after the deputy mayor, give them the yeah. certificate, maybe. Because mm -hmm. uh, they want a picture with you. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh. Great. <laughs> All right. <coughs> All right. Well, good evening and welcome to the Federal Way City Council meeting uh, for uh, Tuesday, April 2nd of 2019. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, good evening. Thank you all for being here. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, Deputy Mayor, do you have a motion? Oh, I do. Um, I move to amend the agenda to add item A under presentations to add certificate of recognition to Myra Tram. Second. All right. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, we'll do it. Uh, Deputy Mayor? Uh, so the very first presentation is a certificate of recognition for Miss Myra Tran, American Idol Top 40. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to welcome Myra Tran and her family, friends, and supporters to Fairway. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge the presence of Vietnamese media, the Phuong Dong Times, uh, Northwest Vietnamese newspaper, SBTN TV. Um, thank you for being here today. Myra Tran is uh, 19 years old Vietnamese. She moved to the U.S. from Vietnam more than a year ago to reunite with her family and pursue her dream of becoming a singer in America. Myra is a student at Todd Bimmer <laughs> High School. At the age of 16, Myra was the winner of the X Factor Vietnam in 2016. And as you know, she has made the top 40 on American Idol in 2019. Her accomplishment is a testament that if you work hard, you will achieve your dream. She is a role model for young people. Mayor Farrell, Deputy Mayor Honda, Council members and people of Fairway, may I introduce you, Myra Tran. Yay. Myra, would you mind standing at the podium? And I'm gonna read a certificate of recognition and then I'll bring it down to you. And then perhaps we can get all of council to come down yeah. with the mm -hmm. picture for yeah. her and her family. This is a certificate of recognition presented to Myra Tran. On behalf of the elected officials and citizens of Federal Way, Washington, in recognition of Myra's achievement as a top 40 finalist on American Idol season 17, and for being a positive young ambassador to people across the country on behalf of the city of Federal Way, we honor her and all of her future accomplishments and successes as she continues to enthusiastically chase her dreams. Oh my God. Signed today, the mayor and uh, city council of the city of Federal Way. Yay. <laughs> now, Myra, as the deputy mayor heads down there, I want to let you know that I have an identical twin brother and he lives in a different part of the country. So about a few days ago, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Council, let's, uh, we're all going to... I'll finish your story. Yeah, I, w I will. I will. Okay. Well, I was just saying about my brother. I never mind. Uh, no, but my, my brother called me the other day, and he said, do you know this Myra Tran from Federal Way? And, I, and he lives in Shreveport, Louisiana. And he called me out of the blue the other day when I was on my way to work, and he said, oh, my gosh, you've got to meet her. And, and he was talking about what a great singer you are. And he and his, his uh, three kids and, and entire family have been watching you on American Idol all the way halfway across the country. So we're all cheering for you and really happy for you.
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> to be to be honest, I'm so happy. I'm s I, this is my honor to be here with all of you, and thank you so much for today to inviting me to be kind, so warm, so like encourage me and support me a lot. Thank you for all of the support from Federal Way from Washington. I love it. <laughs> I have the words like I almost cry now. <laughs> it's just like wow, American Idol is the like the greatest like the greatest moment in my life. Like the greatest journey I've never I've like yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I have learned a lot of experience uh, from Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, and Luke Bryan. Wow. Um, top 40 is the biggest thing for me now. It's so, like, I have no words left to say. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and before we do a, pic a couple of pictures, I think we've got some council members who'd like to say some things. Uh, Councilmember Duclo, then Councilmember No, no, Moore. I'm sorry. Okay, you don't, uh, Councilmember Moore. Hi Council there, um, Myra, I, I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. Uh, like many, I, I've been, I've also watched you and I was just in awe. Um, I want you to know that um, uh, um, we, we have a great council here um, and we have full of a lot of diversity, as you can tell. Um, and I applaud you because uh, speaking English is not an easy thing. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm from Bulgaria. I had to learn how to speak English, and you're doing a lot better than I am. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! So, uh, so way to go on that. I'm really proud and fed away. Uh, we we love you, and and we care about you, and we want to uh, see uh, leaders. Uh, you know, our youth become leaders, uh, and uh, make us really proud. And so, a quick question: What high school are you going to? I'm going to Top Beamer High School. Top Beamer. So not Federal High School or? Yeah, Stop. not. Okay. Stop. Okay. A proud Titan. A council That's good. Um, council Member Johnson and Council Member Sepadasin, and then we'll finish with Council Member Tran. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to hear you sing a note real quick. Right. Uh, <laughs> Do you have something ready? Uh... Yeah, I have. Maybe I have. I was sing. Can, uh, can I sing one night only when I was audition on American Idol? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you want all my love and my devotion. You want my love and so right on the line I have no doubt that I could love you forever The only trouble is you really don't have the time You've got one night only, one night only that's all you have to spare One night only Then you have to run Oh, one night only Wow. 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 That's great. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If I could channel my inner uh, Simon Cow, that was bloody amazing. That was bloody amazing. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. You're, you are making all of us proud to be um, from Federal Way. So thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you to be here with me. Thank you for uh, giving me this. This is how I forever remember in my life. This is the greatest thing I've ever had to give for my family, my parents, like, People around me look proud of me, and I love them so much. I just want to have something to make my parents proud of me. And to be honest, today I'm so honored to be here, and I love you so much. Oh my God, I have the word. Ah! Uh, Councilmember Sepa Dawson. Yeah, I I have no words honestly. <laughs> um, you too. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. And thank you for singing. I wanted you to do the same thing, so we're on the same page. Um, appreciate you. I only wish you were from Fredaway High School. <laughs> <laughs> we love all but, our high schools. But, all right. Yeah. Uh, Councilman Moore? 
<laughs> all right, right, right. I, I went to Decatur High School, so I'm a Gator. You know. So we're gonna do a picture. We're gonna the council's gonna come down here and uh, yeah, come on, come on down here in the center. The council. Oh, been holding. Council for Trent. I uh, hold on, My, Myra. I, I just wanna I just wanna say one one more thing, and that is we are very proud of you. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you in Vietnamese a little bit. Um, chúc cháu thành công nhiều. Um, hopefully one of these days you will sing at our uh, beautiful performing art and event center here in Federal Way. In fact, let me tell you something. I am working with Asia Production right now and try to make that happen. So. Wow. wow. All right. You heard it here first. All right, let's go take a picture. Let's give her one big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. So now I've got to call my brother tomorrow and tell, her, uh, tell him I met you. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so now we are on to uh, Mayor's Emerging Report. Uh, as you can see from the picture today, we had the groundbreaking for uh, the city center steps. And uh, that is uh, the construction is set to begin on the 15th and uh, it should be uh, completed. It's going to transform um, what was a 30-foot wall that separates the Performing Arts and Events Center from Town Square Park, and it's going to be this beautiful amenity that really connect up the whole area. And actually, the area that we're actually standing on right there, right next to the pack, is, is actually going to be, is, they're going to drill down like 25 feet and scoop all of that earth out. And right now where there's a wall, there's going to be a place where we gather, where we uh, come together as a community. And it was great to see the council there and, and uh, many members of the community. And uh, it's all ready to go. So, um, uh, you know, it was, it was just a great event. I'm sure that uh, we'll, we'll hear from council members about it as well. And um, um, so, uh, like I said, it'll be finished this year. I also want to uh, talk about the fact that the money we got from that could only be used. We got a $3 million grant for lift funds. And we also had a $500,000 grant uh, from King County. And, um, and we only used $125,000 of real estate excise tax money 
all of that money can only be used for capital projects. So none of the money for this uh, uh, for the city center steps uh, could be used for any other purpose other than capital projects. But this is the kind of capital project that's really going to be an investment in our downtown to create a space um, uh, where there was just a a, uh, a thirty foot wall. Uh, so very exciting. Watch for that as that develops. Um, all right. Uh, we've got a uh, town hall meeting, or what we what I call a neighborhood connection meeting. That'll be uh, um, uh, Thursday, um, April 25th at Green Gables Elementary at 6 p.m. And so uh, that's an opportunity for myself, uh, and city staff, council will be there, uh, and it's an opportunity essentially to have a town hall meeting. Uh, but with the reason why we call it neighborhood connection is because town hall really goes out into the community. All the directors will be there. Um, including we'll have a presentation from the police department, we'll have a presentation from the public works director, and uh, just different things that are going on in the community. I'll give a brief presentation, and then we're going to hear uh, from, most importantly, we're going to hear from the public. So uh, again, it's a, a great opportunity to really connect uh, with the community. So April 25th, that's a Thursday, at Green Gables Elementary School, likely in the gymnasium. Um, okay, uh, then we've got, um, in regard to recent events, um, in this very council chambers, uh, last Wednesday, the 27th of March, uh, we gathered together, I, I convened together all of the, or many of the uh, churches, the faith-based groups, and the nonprofits in this community to talk about severe weather sheltering um, uh, for uh, the next, you know, obviously, presumably, we're, we're out. Uh, now that it's spring, we weren't, we're not going to have any more severe weather uh, of the cold variety uh, until next winter. Um, but we want to make sure that when that comes, and we have the space of the shelter space and uh, the ability uh, to react uh, in partnership with the uh, churches and nonprofits and uh, that work is ongoing. We had 70 people here. In fact, if you go to my Facebook page, uh, you could see that picture. Um, and uh, we had 70 uh, folks here, um, you know, dozens and dozens of churches and the nonprofit groups. And really, it's really about making sure that you've got the nonprofit groups that can staff uh, the professional services that will be needed uh, once we have that severe weather sheltering um, set up. And that's just, and we're going to have multiple churches, and that way it's not all just the fulcrum or the full weight will not be on just one church or one organization. It will have uh, multiple churches uh, that will help us either on a, on a per event basis or multiple at the same time. So uh, watch for that, and that's something that we're working on and making sure uh, that we can uh, take care of the less fortunate in our community um, when things get, um, when life safety issues are at stake. Um, all right, then uh, let's see here. We had uh, we had the Highline Forum. So right after we had that, after we had 70 people in here, I am so impressed with our staff, with, uh, you know, from uh, Kathy Arndt, uh, you know, my uh, office manager in my office, to uh, John Hutton and his staff. An hour after that meeting with 70 people in here that we had lunch, and many of the council members were here for the faith-based group, and I want to say thank you to my policy partners for being there with that. And, and um, uh, an hour after that meeting, we had the Highline Forum uh, that we just turned the room around in one hour, and we had representatives from the South King County area uh, in local communities and the airport, or the port, uh, to talk about uh, issues relating to uh, air traffic, air, air traffic safety and, and, um, um, and noise and, and all the efforts ongoing with that. And, and uh, we had some uh, uh, people testify and we had uh, representatives from local governments. And so uh, our involvement in Highline Forum is very important. It's the second time that we've hosted the Highline Forum and, um, and it's something that we're going to continue. Um, all right, so uh, then uh, Berkshire Hathaway ribbon cutting um, uh, on uh, Thursday, the next day, this was last Thursday, um, and that's a space on uh, 320th, uh, right around uh, 4th and 5th. Um, had been, uh, there's been a number of uh, businesses in that location, had been All-American Homes previously, and uh, Colwell, uh, uh, Colwell Banker, and uh, a number of other uh, locations, and now it's Berkshire Hathaway. It was great to see those folks. Uh, upcoming events, we've got Federway National Little League Jamboree, and that'll be on Saturday, April 27th at our Little League ball fields. Um, and um, let's see here, um, and that's at 845 AM. We've got Relay for Life in South King County. That's June 7th through 8th at French Field in Kent. And we've got the far, uh, Farmer's Market opening Saturday, May 4th, and then Break the Chains 5K Saturday, May 18th. 
So a lot of things going on, and um, uh, as we get closer to some of those events, I'll remind you. Uh, with that, we've got our council committee reports. Mayor, uh, first. Mayor. Yes. Um, you want yeah. to talk about challenge, Seattle Challenge? Oh, thank you very much. I, you know, I meant to, and, and thank you very much. Uh, Councilmember Asefa Dawson uh, was with me this morning, and we had uh, uh, former Governor Gregoire and the president of Microsoft, Brad Smith, um, at the uh, Museum of Flight uh, earlier today. Um, and that was a, a, a convening of the people. If you remember a, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, about six weeks ago, Microsoft committed a half a billion dollars, $500 million to housing in the South King County, or actually in King County uh, overall in the Puget Sound region. And, um, and it's really for a, a real mix of, of housing and it's working with policymakers and um, uh, and businesses and we had an opportunity uh, today to hear uh, directly from Brad Smith the president of CEO um, the also the CEO of, um, of Challenge Seattle which uh, is an organization of some of the bigger uh, corporations we have in this region and that's chaired by former governor Chris Gregoire and with that uh, Councilmember Sefa Dawson do you have anything to add to that anything take takeaways um. I'm sorry. Yeah, my takeaway, it was a great meeting, and my takeaway was how Microsoft used to only focus on education and transportation, and now they realize how housing is important, especially for middle income affordable housing, because that's the population that has been left out, because we focus on low income, and then there's, the, of course, um, high income or market rate, and so this middle section has been um, lagging support for them. So. I think that was my biggest takeaway is that we're that they want to focus on that population for the most part um, and so um, yeah yeah and I think you know really what I took away from it thank you and that reminds me actually that what what uh, Mr. Smith talked about um, which I, I found interesting which is he said in areas that they have done a lot of research in regard to housing and making sure that you've got a wide array of housing and this is to make sure really that people who work in our communities who either work at Seattle or Federal Way or, or wherever they're working don't have to travel you know a ridiculous lengths amount of time or a, a significant portion of their of their wages to get to where they need to work it's about really making sure that our teachers and our you know firefighters or you know people that are you know you know just regularly employed can afford to you know uh, live um, uh, in the areas that they work and and make sure that uh, the housing doesn't get away from uh, where um, uh, income levels are, are and making sure that we're really keeping an eye on that and that one of the examples while they talked about San Francisco everybody knows about the example of San Francisco how that how that the cost of housing just ran away from people that were living there and they they were essentially priced out of that area we do not want that to happen in in the Puget Sound area and that's why there has to be some intentionality to it you know uh, Councilmember Stephen Dawson my oh Councilmember Duke I, I want to follow up on that yeah. because I used to love going to San Francisco yeah the last time I went there all I saw were BMWs and Audis <laughs> parked on this on this, the outside streets and Ghirardelli Square was completely empty, yeah. which used to be a, a big place to go. Right. I was so disappointed. The only place that hadn't changed was Chinatown. But down there, it was, it was all rich. Right, and that's, we really need to have some intentionality in making sure that we're really making sure that there's a wide array of, of housing stock availability. And, and uh, one of the things, actually, that I really took away from Brad Smith uh, that he talked about was, around the world, whether it's in Australia or whether it's in different portions of, you know, whether it's in Europe and some other locations, if they just have capital, if you just throw money at it, that doesn't achieve the results. If you just use public policy, that doesn't get you the results you really want. It's the marriage of the two uh, with the capital and the public policy makers and all the, um, I think, 12 mayors in, uh, in the area uh, have signed on uh, to this document so far and the Sound Cities Association of which uh, we are a member and I'm a board member of uh, will likely take this up at the Public Issues Committee um, uh, next time they meet. So uh, that's a big thank you for reminding me of that council member. All right uh, that is my report and now we're on to the council committee reports and uh, for FEDREC um, for Finance, Economic Development and Regional Affairs council member Duclo. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'll be we had a, actually a, a very short meeting compared to some of our other ones. But uh, we did an ordinance amending the admission tax to exempt nonprofits for fundraising activities from the taxes, which I think is appropriate. 
um, and an ordinance uh, on the a budget amendments, which will be on the agenda tonight, and we will be looking at that and and hopefully moving it on to second reading. We approve the vouchers and the monthly finance report. And um, at the next meeting, we're going to be discussing the new revenue options developed by the ad hoc committee at the next meeting. And if they want to bring anything, we'll bring recommendations to the, back to the full council. And that's it. All right. Okay, uh, Councilmember Moore. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Uh, the only thing to report out of Lodging Tax and Advisory Committee um, is <clears throat> we're looking at a little name change. Uh, and so we're discussing that in our committee and uh, looking forward to, uh, I know I've seen some counsel uh, from the Deputy Mayor and, and some of my colleagues, and you as well, uh, Mr. Mayor, along with our attorney. Uh, but we're looking to, to make this a more simplified name. Uh, an example could be uh, the Federal Way Tourism um, Committee. Uh, that's a merely an example. So that way people understand that, hey, we have a tourism programs and efforts that are well underway here in Federal Way and that we are a tourist attraction with wild waves and, and many of our amazing assets like parks uh, and, and whatnot. So uh, that's the big thing we're looking at amongst others. But uh, with that, my report will, I will end my report. Councilor Co uh, Copang, a land use. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, uh, wait, how long ago was it that we got Brook Lake? Was it three years ago? Five years ago. Five years ago, I get Brook Lake property. No. Um, yes. I think it was, was, it, was it, five it was 2014. Wow. wow. Yeah. Time flies. I know. Five years ago, we got Brook Lake, and now we're just taking the first step to connect that to the Hylobos, uh Park, um, which is uh, adjacent to it. So, really looking forward to that. We uh, actually are, we'll be looking at that. Um, on the consent agenda in, in April, on April 16th. But again, that's an exciting development. Um, we also, uh, um, the staff did a lot of work on the complete streets ordinance, and we just got our first $100,000 grant. And so we'll be looking for approval from the council to accept that on the 16th as well. Um, that is, is gonna be designed to, or be utilized to improve uh, access uh, in the downtown core. Um, we also, uh, um, obviously airport issues are very important to this council. And uh, we had uh, the prof Professor Tim Larson from uh, the UW that's been part of, the, that's been uh, doing the uh, ultrafine particle study, um, came here and gave a presentation of land use and transportation last night. Uh, we had uh, obviously the, almost the full council here. In addition, we had a number of community members that came and uh, it was, I think, very informative uh, meeting. So again, we're looking at, uh, every issue we can and uh, to make the city a better place so anyway can I just add something to that because I one of the people that came I had given him some information but I go up to Town Square Park and I like tomorrow I will do a mile a mile and a half up there and I counted in 20 minutes jet planes coming over both at both ends of the park and I counted I lost track at, after about eight and it's and those particles because especially in the summertime, we have children up there, young children with their families. The mother's out there, the father's out there with them, and the kids are playing on all of the different things. And when that's, you know, I'm old, so I can take it. But these kids, I mean, they're young, and they shouldn't be inhaling all of those particles that are coming from those jets. We have to do something about, about that. All right, thank you. All right, now for Parks, Recreation, Human Services, and Public Safety Committee, Councilmember Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, before I talk about the committee, I did want to acknowledge the Diversity Commission for a really successful retreat uh, two Saturdays ago. Um, I attended with Councilmember Sefa Dawson and Councilmember Copang as well. Um, they had a really profound um, talk about what they would like to accomplish in the city and how they could work with council. And what I noticed is there's a lot of great skill sets on, on all of our commissions, really, but Diversity Commission. Um, as it relates to human services and diversity, so I'm hoping we can continue that dialogue with them. And they also took part in a uh, racial equity and social justice training that was really profound as well. Um, I did want to say that next Tuesday is our parks uh, meeting from 5 to 7 p.m. here at City Hall. And so we have a lot of stuff on the agenda. Um, we were going to be talking about the Community Development Block Grant Plan um, for 2020 through 2024. And we'll also be talking about the Federal Way Youth Action Team contract. Um, we'll be talking about the family shelter contract and get an update 
on that. And then we'll also be talking about potential jail services contracts. So I'm sure a, a lot of the public is aware we've left the SCORE facility, um, which I think is a, a great move for the city. And so we'll be talking about what's next um, for our inmates. And then finally, we'll be talking about a, um, we'll have a quarterly crime report from our chief. So, so thanks to uh, Chief Wang and his leadership for that as well. And so um, a lot of things on the agenda. And finally, a, a senior commission discussion around what's to come with the senior commission. So um, th I think the mayor announced at the State of the City, we're going to be forming a senior commission in the city for the first time. And so we'll be talking about the mission and the structures and policies around that. So um, it's going to be a really long meeting, I think. And so looking forward to it. So next Tuesday, uh, 5, to, 5 to 7 PM at the um, High Lobos room next door. Long and consequential, it sounds like. So that's great. Uh, a lot of good work. All right, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. Um, so as you've heard, we have uh, four, four council committees, and the public is always welcome to attend. The agendas and the um, locations and the times are printed the week before the meeting. So every week, I think on Thursday or Friday at the latest, a meeting schedule goes out on our webpage. And you can look on that web page and you can get all the information you need about when the meetings are and what the agendas are and the, the packets actually that, that the council members get. So you're welcome to come and um, you are also welcome to speak at those meetings. Um, the, at the last Board of Health, King County uh, Seattle Board of Health meeting, we were talking about our work plan and I have been trying for the last um, almost a year to get an issue very close to us on the work plan and I'm very excited to say that we have finally agreed to put the health concerns from the SeaTac Airport on the King County um, Board of Health work plan and um, in case you don't know there's an increased amount of respiratory issues especially asthma in South King County there are two or three different types of cancer that are increased in South King County. They may or may not be from the air, from um, issues from the airport. They may be just environmental. They might just be because we're South King County. But uh, data shows that in South King County, we do have some health concerns. And it will be very exciting to have this studied at the Board of Health. We will also be studying vaping and marijuana use, housing and homelessness, and gun violence. So it'll be a busy year for us. So um, once again, I want to remind everyone that the council has a Facebook page. We'd like you to go to it and look at it and use it. And you can send comments in. We won't be commenting back because we don't want to have a meeting on Facebook, but um, we will be told of your comments and we can comment to you individually. All right, thank you. Um, all right, and uh, is there, uh, Councilmember Sepadas, anything to report from the Public Issues Committee of, or PIC from SCA, Sound Cities? Actually not from PIC, but we're gonna be voting on um, a, a several things coming up. So I will send you a, a, a summary of that so you guys can give me your feedback um, to take to uh, PIC. But I do want to um, share that I was at the affordable housing of today, um, put on by, by um, um, HDC, Housing Development Consortium, last Friday. And it was very informative. And, and my takeaway from that really is we need um, 244,000 housing units by 2040, uh, which is around 44,000 in the next uh, uh, for five years. And so um, they talked a lot about um, mixed housing stock from low income to medium income to, to market rate because there's seven jobs being created an hour in the Puget Sound region. And that's a lot. So where do people live is the question really. So um, they have toolkits that um, um, cities and jurisdictions could use. And so one of the questions is what is our policy around housing? And if the policy does not match the need moving forward, then how can we proactively work on our policy so it does meet the need and, the, and, and um, make sure that we are aware of it and also participating in do it, coming up with a solution? Great. Thank you very much. 
Okay, uh, now for the most important part of the evening, our uh, public comment. Um, and uh, you have three minutes, uh, unless you've uh, got five people present and they've signed on, uh, or you identify them, excuse me. Uh, so the first is uh, Jan Barber. And that's the, that'll be followed by Fawn Sterling of the Washington Diamonds Drill Team and Drumline. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council Members, and all the people that have come to attend. I want to invite you again to make music Federal Way, which is going to take place on June 21st. And while the music we make isn't going to be exactly the same as our wonderful award-winning soloist you've heard tonight, I wanted to give you a sample. This is from an award-winning team, and I'll have, uh, do you want to see? Say something. Um, my name is Fawn Sterling. Uh, we're the Washington Diamonds Drill Team. Uh, we perform in different city parades. Um, our second year of winning um, Seattle Alaska Airlines Seafood Torchlight Parade as Best Drill Team and Drumline. And so she asked us to um, help uh, teach people how to drum on, on, on buckets. And so here's the taste. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go, uh, let's go three more minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> we have three more minutes. What's that? Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Great. You get go. in federal way who might be younger. How, is the, how, old, how old is the youngest here? Um, the youngest is 15, 14, sorry. 14, 15, and 17. And we also have a girl drummer who is 20. She's 20. Yeah. Let's give a big federal way round of applause. Thank you. We're well, really looking forward to make music federal way. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Fawn. Thank you, uh, Jan. All right, now, uh, Karen Brigado. I hope you brought an instrument. Maybe she can sing for us. Or maybe you can sing for us. I, I don't have an instrument, but I'm going to be talking to you about the admissions tax, which has to do with those um, organizations that do provide music here in town. Um, thank you for telling us about the FedRec committee meeting exempting nonprofits. That's wonderful. As the admission tax is for you city council members and you audience, uh, it taxes recreation, sports, and amusements here in town. It has for, uh, well, prior years. The new one has been adopted in 19, uh, 2017. Um, uh, it taxes wild waves, mu uh, the movie theaters, the PAC and all acts, but what it doesn't do is exempt nonprofits that counts charities, arts organizations, uh, churches, and I congratulate the FedRAC for seeing that 
through to its end. And I hope all of them are exempted. Thank you. And Karen, I think we're. Uh, I think it's it's uh, still being worked on. I think that they're still they're still working on that. We're going to get you, we're going to get your information on what happened in Fedrac. Uh, so you've got mm -hmm. all the information. You can come back. Okay. Right. And as you know, a lot of the arts organizations uh, are taxed, but some of them aren't, and it's arbitrary bias. Um, many of the churches who should be cha uh, taxed are not. Many of the charities are not. A lot of the arts organizations are, and it's arbitrary. I hope FedRec fixed that. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Okay, now um, uh, we've got uh, Tashona Nash, Dana Holloway, Betty Taylor, and uh, uh, Bridget Jimenez. In that order. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tashana Nash, and tonight I am speaking on behalf of Save Warehouser Campus's board. I will be reading the statement we submitted to the Federal Way Mirror in response to their article announcing the Federal Way Chamber of Commerce's decision to endorse IRG's Woodbridge Corporate Park that is proposed on the former Warehouser Campus. The following letter was signed by Lori Seacrest, our president, and endorsed by the Save Warehouser Campus board on March 26, 2019. Save Warehouser Campus supports responsible development of the historic Warehouser Campus that brings <coughs> good jobs and a solid tax base to the city of Federal Way without destroying the unique character of the campus and bringing unacceptable levels of semi-truck traffic to the community. We are surprised the Greater Federal Way Chamber of Commerce has stated its support for the Woodbridge Corporate Park development, while the City of Federal Way is still reviewing two of IRG's three permit applications. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is still doing its own permit review of IRG's per, uh, projects, and the extent of the impacts from the proposed 1.5 million square feet of warehouse industrial space is still undetermined. In addition, the jobs estimated by IRG are not based on any specific tenants or purchasers of the proposed buildings. As a member of the chamber, like IRG, we expected the chamber would provide us an equal opportunity to meet with its board and other members to present our vision, explain viable development alternatives that have better lifestyle and economic benefits for the community, and share concerns about the Woodbridge proposal that have been officially expressed by the state and county transportation agencies, local tribes, and stakeholders like Rainier Audubon and the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation. The Chamber's statement of support says that IRG's development is expected to preserve the unique natural space of the property, including the rhododendron species garden and the Pacific Bonsai Museum, and that IRG has stated commitment to responsible development and stewardship of its property. We are encouraged to hear this, but we also desire preservation of the North Lake shoreline and the system of nature trails on the campus for continued use by people from around the region. We look forward to meeting with IRG in April when we hope to see their assurances in a development agreement, along with a master development plan that delineates the areas that will be preserved, providing our community with certainty about the future of this special property. Thank you. Thank you. Dana Holloway. I'm back. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dana Holloway, and I'm concerned about our city. There are so many things happening in, around, and to Federal Way that will change our city, many with lasting impacts. City residents expect the city and elected officials to make decisions that are in the best interest of the city and its residents. I believe everyone wants the city to manage and plan for growth with types of location, types and location of developments that can revitalize our city, restaurants and interesting shops, businesses with wage earning jobs, managing the increase in population and the resulting traffic congestion, parks and green and open spaces. My first citizen comment at the city uh, council was in 2016. It was regarding the IRG's plans they had for the former warehouser property. I dislike public speaking, and I had never done it before. 
but I felt strongly about what was planned. And it compelled me and <laughs> to speak up. Like it or not, I will continue to do so. I'm so passionate about this. <clears throat> Once again, I need to point out that IRG Woodbridge property is zoned corporate park and office park. The property is not zoned industrial, no matter how many times IRG representatives use the word industrial. Ponder something. Think back to 1994, the year of the concomitant agreement between Weyerhaeuser and the city. Think about the size of warehouses that were built in 1994. Now compare that with the size of the five massive warehouses IRG plans to build. It exceeds the intent of the development of the property. It's like comparing a fishing boat to the gigantic, um, new gigantic cruise ships, which will bring over 800 semi-truck daily trips to and from the property, adding to the congestion on I-5, Highway 18, and the local roads. That impact is not something that Federal Way and the surrounding communities want or need. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> Betty Taylor. Bye. My name is Betty Taylor, and I've been speaking before the council for years. And um, I'm speaking, today I'm going to be speaking as a human service commissioner. And um, I, I, I take the, um, the role as a human service commissioner very, I don't take it lightly. Um, we do a lot of work on the commission. We review the grant proposals, and we make decisions. And the decisions are based on on, on, on basically the information that we, we received from the grantor, from the grantee. And I remember um, um, this, um, this, this about a couple of weeks ago, um, we made a decision on, on something. But, um, and, and it, it puzzled me, basically, and, and we're always encouraged. If we don't understand something, we are encouraged on the Human Commission to come to the council and speak. I don't know why nobody else does, but here I am. Uh, but anyway, I was concerned, you know, I, w I was just concerned about the fact that when we, when we because the, the, we, we have to go based on the material that is, is given. And I know that we have to pass the material on to the council for approval. And um, I was just, I was, I, and I know that the council, they approved it, but then I was, well, I was confused because they, to me, they didn't provide enough information to me to be approved. But I know that it depends upon, I, I know we have to send it to the council, so we're just, we're, we just send the information to the council and they make the final decision. But I just wanted to find out how do you base your, how did, being, because it, it comes up a lot, it's really important to know how the decisions are based. You know, um, and, I, and I know that I always have the opportunity, if I wanted to, if I want to, excuse me, if I wanted to, I could talk to Sarah about it because she's really open. But for me, to be honest, and it, we look at information, and the, 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 the decision is based upon the information that was received. Did they provide all the documentation and, 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 and stuff that has to be looked at. And we work hard. Our brains are working tirelessly, like day after day, night after night. And sometimes we don't even get no sleep because, and then we're in discussions, we're trying to discuss among ourselves, you know, did we make the right decision based on information, not based on, oh, well, this group and that group or this group, and, oh, I know this and I, you know, we base it basically on integrity uh, and stuff, and I, I just want to find out how, what, how did that happen? How did they base their information? Because it was a little bit too much. Thank you, Betty. 
Thank you. And Betty, I'm going to have, uh, is Jeff Watson in the back? Uh, Jeff, I, I'm going to have Jeff Watson uh, uh, in the back of the room talk with you right now uh, about the particular issue and, and maybe what caused concern. Thank you very much, Betty. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Uh, Bridget Jimenez. And then uh, uh, Katie Alstrom. Hello. Oh, good job pronouncing my last name too. Thank you. Yeah, no one, no one ever gets it right, but <laughs> you did. So, um, so I'm just here to um, kind of report back and um, talk about um, the Emerging Leaders um, Program and kind of, kind of just let the um, the people far away know a little bit more about it and all the great opportunities um, that has come from the program. So this morning, I got the opportunity of going to our beautiful capital to learn more about how the city um, works with um, the capital, how they work together. Um, through Council uh, Member Moore, my mentor, um, I was able to have meetings with um, Rep. Reeves, Rep. Um, Pilicotti, is that? Pilicotti. Pil yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, Senator um, Wilson and um, Justice Gonzalez. I was introduced to many other important people who work at the Capitol as well. I got to sit down and converse with them and really pick at their brains with all my questions. I, got, I also got to see all the beautiful buildings, paintings of um, past governors, and of course, the iconic cherry blossoms. I got to um, see both um, floors for the Senate and House, and um, Rep. Reeves kindly took pictures of, of me sitting at her desk, and I also got um, pictures um, with the governor's um, gavel, so yeah. <laughs> Um, I got to see firsthand what it's like during this very busy period um, on the Capitol, and um, also because it's very busy because their um, their session is about to um, come to a close. Um, from this phenomenal phenomenal opportunity, more opportunities to further my knowledge arose. Um, offer offer offers like. Job shadowing, shadowing for um, Justice Gonzalez, um, to arranging one-on-one -on -one meetings with civil rights um, and corporate attorneys, which is really exciting for me because I definitely see myself going into law. And um, oh yeah, and also um, having coffee with Senator Wilson, which is really cool as well. I would also like to take this time to um, acknowledge all the hard work that the council has been doing in. Um, providing uh, opportunities for youth here in Federal Way, leadership in particular. So, yeah, that's it. All right, thank you very much. Great job. Councilman Moore? Bridget. Bridget. Uh, right here. Uh, you did a great job, <clears throat> and um, I um, wanted to share with the public and the council that uh, Bridget just recently became a ment uh, not a mentor, uh, an intern for... Oh. Um, Congressman Adam Smith. So oh, really wow. proud of her. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so there, there's at least two people on the council that have interned for him. Uh, and so uh, it's a pleasure to be your mentor, and you're doing a great job and great job at public speaking. I expect you to come in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous, sorry, <laughs> for all the stuttering, but <laughs> yeah. It's great. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Katie Alstrom. Hi, my name is Katie Ashton. I'm from Federal High School. I'm also a part of the Emerging Leadership Program that Bridget is also in. Um, today I wanted to recognize our Federal High School ROTC program. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, it's um, Air Force Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. We do a lot of stuff within our community and not many people know what it is or what we've done, but uh, recently, a few weeks ago, we went to our regionals competition in Oregon City. And I'm proud to say that we brought our federal way spirit and uh, we made, I would like to say we made our city proud. We brought back um, home, we brought back home a first place in the entire region out of 33 schools for our color guard team. 
our unarmed team, we won uh, fourth place. If there wasn't a multiplier, we would have gotten second in the entire region of Puget Sound. Um, and overall, we won third place. I just wanted to recognize them. I'm on the team as well. <laughs> I wanted to uh, let the city know because like with um, Maya, we have a lot of inspiring youth in our city and it's just something so wonderful and I, I don't know, I'm really proud of everyone, all of our youth and what we've been doing and I just wanted to show the city that um, some of the other programs that are contributing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so Katie, which I sometimes call her Sarah, I don't know why, she has, looks like a Sarah to me sometimes, um, is a member of the ROTC and Sergeant Smith is her leader and he is an awesome uh, leader. He helps us with the Kiwanis Veterans Day program and the Kiwanis Flag Day program. So he's awesome and Katie is doing a, a, an awesome job. She's a junior. I can hardly wait to see what she'll do as a senior because she's uh, she's amazing, and I'm so glad that she joined this program and that she became my mentee. All right, thank you, Katie. Mayor. I, I just, Katie, Casey, thank you so much for representing us so well down there. I'm very, very proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mayor, uh, thank can you. I add, can I? Oh, Councilmember Stephanie Dawson. Thank you. So my mentee, um, Hannah Santiago, wanted to be here tonight, but she couldn't because she's a finalist. Um, for writing uh, for AVID program and so she's actually at a ceremony right now recognizing them so just wanted to say that about another mentee who's doing well in the community and so thank you guys you're doing well and really proud of you thank you okay and we've oh, Councilor Johnson really quickly yeah. and I just wanted to remind everyone um, the council is doing this work uh, outside of our normal job hours working with these mentees and so um, I think as you can see um, from the mentees speaking tonight, I think it's living up to what we hoped it would be. And the last meeting, hopefully when they, when they graduate from the program in May or June, um, they'll be sitting up on the dais with us. So I'm excited about that. Great, thank you. Okay, great program. And uh, uh, thank you, Katie, and thank you, Bridget, uh, for coming this evening. All right, we've got uh, four uh, letters to be read into the record. Uh, one of the first by Richard Pearson, the next by Jean uh, Perietti, next uh, Suzanne Vargo, and then Ann Cutting. And I will hand those down to the uh, city clerk to uh, be read into the record. And we should probably do the timer for each one. Okay. Please. Okay, this is Richard Pearson. I regret not being present with your, I regret not being present tonight with your consequential action on the proposed Federal Way Comprehensive Travel Plan Amendment. This amendment will disrupt the planned South 324th Street downtown traffic dispersion route to the east of I-5 from a traffic circle to what has been variously to what has been variously been called a detour, redundant road, U-turn, or dogly extension to Warehouser Way. I object to the amendment based on procedural, safety, traffic, environmental, citizen cost, and inconvenience, and businesses and economic development grounds. I urge you to reject it also. Procedurally, this proposed amendment did not get public review until late December of last year after the Planning Commission canceled a public hearing of the amendment on October 18th, 2017. An early review of the alternatives would have prevented the seemingly emergency tonight. From a safety standpoint, a change from a successfully proven and widely adopted traffic circle to divert east side, north and south traffic on a downtown bypass is safer than a series of right and left turns. From a traffic perspective, I am disappointed that a 2008 traffic data is presented without recognition of the traffic documented in the city land use applications of IRG and DeVita. In addition, with a rapidly increasing state and county forecast, population by the end of the century could easily be 50% larger than now, resulting in a very different traffic volumes than anticipated in 2008. Environmentally, this amendment is a disaster. Eliminating a managed forest buffer required by the 1994 annexation warehouse or corporate park zoning, mitigating an existing wetland with a mandate, man-made substitute, and probably most importantly, adding carbon and other pollutants into the air caused by millions of extra miles of travel, contributing to global warming and local health problems. From a citizen standpoint, 
In addition to the environmental and safety impacts, there are the increased travel time and vehicle expenses associated with the millions of extra miles of travel added by this amendment. Finally, from a business and economic development perspective, the value of more efficient travel corridors created by the existing plan to and from our city center to expanding business and residential east side growth provides quicker and more direct access to businesses and residential areas to all the city. Planning Commission members in the discussion with the joint LUTC meeting that you requested concluded that they had not been influenced by the possibility of Davida leaving Federal Way if the proposed amendment of the comp plan is rejected. I urge you, the Council, to likewise not be intimidated by such a possibility. Davida is a great company and the kind of company we want in our city with a mission of supporting the communities it works in and protecting the environment. Don't block a smooth flowing city center, by city center bypass to the east of the downtown with a building that would be disastrous to the travel comp plan objective. Jennifer, how much is left? Um, a paragraph and a half. Go ahead and read it, please. Um, let's see. Don't block a smooth flowing city center bypass to the east of the downtown with a building that would be disastrous to the travel comp plan objective to maintain mobility through a safe, balanced, and integrated traffic system and detrimental to a current to current and future citizens. Work with DeVita to develop an alternative that would be a win-win for the city, DeVita, and our entire city, entire community. Look at the painting on the wall behind staff and note how much the area we now call Federal Way has changed in just over a century. Listen to the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, who recently said, if we are going to grow, we need good transportation corridors. Please do not create a legacy of poor transportation corridor as proposed in the amendment before you. Reject it. Develop a better solution that will meet the needs of DeVita and the great city of Federal Way now and in the future. <coughs> okay, this is from Jean Perrietti. I know the council will be voting tonight on the comprehensive plan amendment to change the alignment of South 324th, the alignment of South 324th Street. I hope that you vote in favor of it. I am favor, in favor of this extension, and this is my opinion, not that of Save Warehouses or Campus, for a few reasons. Davida wants the accommodation so it can bring 700 plus jobs from Tacoma to Federal Way. Our, cities need, our city needs these jobs that pay well, and they are as close to a sure thing as we have right now. Much of what has made Davida's desire not to have a street run through its property. But this is not Amazon asking for millions in tax breaks. Diverting the path of the road seems like an acceptable accommodation without major disruption to the transportation systems. Straightening the alignment of South 324th so that it connects directly to Warehouser Way South makes a lot of sense. It will provide a more direct route for the medic units and fire trucks from South King Fire and Rescue Station 64 to access South 324th and potentially new I-5 ramps there. It will also provide a more direct route to the state boat ramp on the east side of Warehouser Way and also to the North Lake area that Save Warehouser Campus hopes to preserve for public use. Although I think it was mentioned in the presentation at the last council meeting that 32nd Avenue would, in the future, connect north to Military Road, I don't see that extension on either the city's short-term or long-range transportation plans or on King County's long-range plan. The property is currently unincorporated. Perhaps I missed finding it on the maps. Environmental concerns will be addressed in the actual design process when the public will have opportunity to weigh in. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. From Suzanne Vargo, I am sorry I am unable to attend tonight's meeting. Thank you for allowing my letter to be read into the amendment to the comprehensive plan for the 324th road. I would like to take my last time to ask the planning LUTC city council and mayor to be mindful about the decisions you are about to make. For three years, I have tried to educate you about our waters, North Lake, and the High Lobos waterway. Again, I would like to remind you that the Warehouser campus was uniquely designed to capture, enhance, and preserve the wetlands, tributaries, and streams. This was done solely in respect to North Lake. A rare 1994 master plan map shows how the flow of water moves across the campus. The area of the Tech Center building shows water flowing in an easterly fashion towards North Lake. The barbaric method of clearing near the Tech Center a year ago has affected how or if the water now makes it to the lake. Heavy machinery, uprooting trees, and removal of native, removal of native shrubbery is detrimental to the intricate hydric soils that make up the rare and unique property. Lakes are recreational and as such are a part of our city's economy. 
The lake is for fishing, small engine boating, swimming, and wildlife observation. It is for the health of habitat and residents of North Lake that we must look past the billfold and do all it takes to preserve the recharge of the lake and in turn the east branch of the High Lobos. The lake is for all citizens to enjoy and I believe as a resident of 54 years, I must do all I can to ensure this wonderful lake and its surroundings are here for another 54 years and beyond. A recent planning member said he was not worried about the wetlands or retention ponds as they will be dealt with by Army Corps and Ecology. To, to that I say this, without the entire property being assessed and seen as a whole entity which, in which it would be, was sold, the piecemeal approach does not allow Army Corps to see the big picture and make the appropriate recommendations or approvals. Therefore, it is up to all of you to factor in the entire property and how it will function and aid the lake for generations to come. The city's decision to stamp all projects with the NDS should not be allowed as the concomitant agreement is to be followed. Again, to not look at the entire property and how the, connect and how the connectivity is vital to the recharge of the lake may prove to be thoughtless and irresponsible. Not everything should be mitigated. Do not alter the existing retention pond as it is the mitigation for the build out that already happened. Retention ponds are not ideal and should not be the answer to all development issues. They do not allow for natural, natural recharge flow of water, nor does this process allow for the microbenthic invertebrate to travel via trees, stones, and water to the lake where it is a food source. IRG, DaVita, and the city should be concerned on what a new road, retention ponds, mitigation, and heavy machinery in sensitive areas will do for North Lake for long term. I believe this road change is unnecessary in the way it is written at the time. I am urging all committee members to think long term and do what is right and responsible for the future health of our recreational aquifer recharge areas. How much left? Three sentences. Let's do it. Okay. Please. I am confident a better solution can be had if we all have a common goal of preservation for North Lake. What happens at this lake affects four other lakes and two watersheds. Please weigh all the options and do so with within logical and thoughtful parameters. The lake is for all to enjoy. Okay, and the Annette Cutting, or Ann Cutting, pardon me. Okay. Dear Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council Members, as a commercial insurance agent, all of my customers are owners of businesses. Many of these businesses are in a construction and development. Federal Way has a reputation of being extremely difficult to do business with. Unfortunately, the last council meeting confirmed this. Schedules are very important in the construction industry and delays are costly. We should be doing everything in our power to accommodate DaVita and the other companies that want to locate here. I just hope they don't change their minds. There are few vocal citizens who don't understand business or the need for cities to recruit them. They will not be happy with any business or change near their warehouse or property. It appeared that they are not trying to bully it appeared that they are trying to bully the council and for some it's working. Other businesses are watching and we need them. Please stop these delays and do everything you can to recruit DeVita. And that's all of them. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make public comment? Anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Um, all right, now moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, there are three items. I'll go ahead and read them and I'll ask uh, council after I've read them uh, if they would like an item uh, pull for separate consideration. A are the minutes for the March 19th, 2019 regular and special meeting. Item B, the monthly financial reports, February 2019. And item C, vouchers, uh, February 2019, 2619 uh, two, through 31519. Council, any, uh, would a council member wish to pull an item for separate consideration? Hearing none, does uh, Deputy Mayor, do you have a motion? Yes. I move to approve items A through C on the consent agenda. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, items A through C are, are, are passed. Six, council business, authorization to apply for sound transit system access funds. We'll have a staff presentation from Tony Doucette, staff liaison to sound transit. Tony? Good evening, Mayor Farrell, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, and Council Members. Uh, the subject before you is authorization to apply for sound transit system access funds. Um, and my name is Tony Doucette. I'm here from the Public Works Department uh, on behalf of the Streets and Traffic Divisions. 
Uh, the policy question is, should Sound Transit authorize staff to apply for grant funding from the Sound Transit System Access Fund for two projects supporting uh, access to and from existing and planned Sound Transit facilities? Uh, as for background information on the grant, um, Puget Sound voters approved Sound Transit 3, abbreviated as ST3, in 2016 uh, to dramatically expand transit facilities in the region. Uh, ST3 included a $100 million system access fund to be allocated equally among Sound Transit's five sub-areas. Uh, jurisdictions within Sound Transit's service area are allowed to submit up to two applications for fund per jurisdiction. And the stated goal of the system access fund is to help uh, fund improvements that make it easier for riders to get to and from uh, Sound Transit stations and facilities, as well as facilities that Sound Transit serves. Uh, public Works and Community Development staff reviewed planned streets, capital, and transportation improvement projects uh, and brainstormed potential new projects for eligibility. Uh, in, in this process, two projects stood out uh, for applicability to the grant goal, uh, strength compared to the grant evaluation criteria, and quality of the project to benefit downtown Federal Way. Uh, the first project application is for pedestrian pathway improvements, and this is a project that's kind of pro programmatic and includes four separate schedules uh, that are available as funding allows. Um, and the improvements to the, the improved pedestrian access to the Federal Way Transit Center. And the second project uh, is uh, an ap uh, application, sorry, the second project application is signalizing the intersection of 21st Avenue South and South. <coughs> um, the first project I'll go into detail on is the pedestrian pathways improvement. As I mentioned, there are four connections, uh, pedestrian connections. Um, they're listed here. I've got a map on the next slide that'll make it a little easier to see. Uh, and I will say this is a new project that would be added to the streets capital improvement plan and, and transportation improvement plan if uh, funds were awarded. Uh, this is the map I mentioned. Uh, the four schedules, uh, although I apologize, the letters are a little small to see. The first one, uh, Schedule A, is on 319th Street, uh, east of 23rd Avenue South, uh, connecting basically uh, 23rd Avenue South and the Gateway Shopping Center. Uh, this would be a, a sidewalk on the north side. Uh, connection B is uh, on 25th Avenue South, uh, south of the Calvary Lutheran, Lutheran Church, um, connecting to the uh, South uh, King County Metro Park and Ride. Uh, connection C is east of the Performing Arts and Events Center and would preserve a, a connection between um, the shopping plaza to the north and then 316th Street. And then Connection D is, uh, is basically connecting Pete Von Reichbar Way and uh, 21st Avenue South. Uh, essentially north of the Starbucks and the Mod Pizza. And all, as all four of these would be sidewalk um, improvements that provide pedestrian access to and from. Uh, the second project would be signalizing the intersection of 21st Avenue South and South 320th. Um, the project improvements would include adding a signal at 21st Avenue South, uh, installing accessible pedestrian push buttons and countdown pedestrian signal heads, uh, installing new crosswalks and a pedestrian refuge island across South 320th Street, and uh, incorporating the uh, intersection into the city's adaptive program. Uh, this project is currently identified on the street's capital improvement plan, but not funded in the six-year transportation improvement plan. And this is a project map just basically showing the intersection. Uh, is a quick status and uh, next steps. Uh, staff preliminary, uh, develop preliminary estimates and project details needed to submit eligibility requirements um, on March 11th. And then on March 18th, we received feedback that um, both projects were eligible to receive funds. Uh, so if authorized to apply for system access funds, staff will prepare applications uh, for both projects to submit by the April 12th, uh, 2019 application deadline. It's fairly tight. That's next Friday. Uh, so the options considered are to authorize staff to apply for Sound Transit system access funds for two projects supporting access to and from <coughs> Existing and planned sound transit facilities and return to committee and council if funds are awarded or uh, do not authorize staff to apply for sound transit system access funds and provide direction to staff. Uh, and the mayor recommends option one to authorize staff to apply for sound transit system access funds. And with that, I am happy to answer any questions the council may have. Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. I was going to ask this last night and thought I'd look it up on my own, but I didn't have time to do that today. What is an accessible pedestrian push button? And how is it different than what we currently have? Honestly, I'd have to get the details from Rick, but I think it's just something that you can easily get to. Um, OK. Yeah. I anticipated this might draw some questions. Um, yes, so an accessible pedestrian push button is one that one can be reached by a, um, a person in a wheelchair. 
and also has a locator tone so that um, blind people can find it. So um, it is our current standard. We're just making the point with Sound Transit in the application that we're going to meet all the latest accessibility standards with the application. And will there be more time to cross the street, or is it not needed? Because uh, I can tell you that some of our streets, when I'm crossing them, I, I run out of time. Right. One of the things that we've been working on is figuring out where additional time is needed. Um, a few years ago, there was a change in the standard amount of time we need to provide. And so where we need to deviate from that, either less time or more time, we're going to be conducting studies of what the actually the, the standard requires, 15th percentile walking speed. So the slowest 15 percent might not be accommodated, but 85 percent of the people would be. Um, another technology option that we're looking into is um, some systems have the capability of an extended press on the push button would provide additional time. So we're going to be looking at that technology change, too. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilmember Stephanie Dawson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if approved, when would this project start? Uh, good question. So we're not identifying any funding or, or projects to be uh, designed or constructed until 2021, 2022. The projects, the money has to be spent basically before the Federal Way Link Extension opens, which is 2024. So within our process, um, it's uh, we're targeting the 2021 timeframe, 2022. Thank you. All right, Councilor, any other questions? All right, Councilor Copang, do you have a motion? I do have a motion. Before the motion, Tony, I want to thank you. Uh, LUTC actually listened to this last night um, because of the uh, accelerated uh, um, timeline here to get this approved. So uh, thank you for the presentation. That's why there's not a lot of questions. They, most of them got asked last night. So anyway, with that, uh, I move to authorize staff to apply for the Sound Transit System Access Funds for two projects supporting access to and from existing and future planned sound transit facilities and return to committee and council to accept funds if awarded. Second. Second. All right. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Matter passed unanimously. Item B, proposed settlement regarding the Parisi Gray lawsuit. I take it item C is connected as well, the Dillon lawsuit? That's correct. We, we'll take both of those uh, jointly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Council Members, um, just for the benefit of the public, as is standard practice in a settlement of litigation matters, we already discussed all the details of the settlement in executive session. We're here to take action this afternoon or this evening. Um, just as a, a summary of the events that led to this uh, lawsuit, there was uh, an auto accident uh, on May 30th of 2017 that involved one of our employees. It was an auto collision. Um, there were two passengers in the vehicle that was impacted by our employee. Um, they both claimed personal injuries. We have settled, we have negotiated a settlement um, for $6,500 in the matter of Parisi Gray and $20,000 in the matter of uh, Mr. Smith. Are there any questions? Council, any questions? All right. Uh, Deputy Mayor Honda, with regard to item B, do you have a motion? Yes. I move approval of the proposed settlement in the matter of Parisi Gray versus City of Federal Way in the amount of $6,500. Second. All right, there's been a motion. A second. second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Matter passed from announced me. As to item C, Deputy Mayor Honda. I move approval of the proposed settlement in the matter of Smith versus City of Federal Way in the amount of $20,000. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Matters, uh, the matter is uh, approved unanimously. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Um, all right. Ordinances. Uh, first reading, we've got uh, Council Bill uh, 756, the 2019 and 20 budget amendments. First, we'll have a staff presentation from our finance director, Ade Everula. Then we'll have uh, council questions and discussion, and then we'll have citizen comment. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council. 
Uh, this is a 2019-20 biennium budget amendment. Uh, just to give a quick uh, background, uh, according to RCW 35A-34-130, the legislative authority of a city having adopted a provision of this chapter shall provide by ordinance for a mid biennium review and modification of the biennium budget, which is what you are doing. Uh, 2019-20 biennium budget was adopted December 4, 2018. Uh, I also met with uh, most of the council member on March 14 to discuss most of uh, the uh, amendment. The amendment was uh, taken to FEDRAC uh, on March 26, and now is uh, before you. Uh, some of uh, the uh, items that affect preparation of this budget is uh, the fund balance uh, policy which the council adopted. In that, we must maintain certain number, certain amount of fund balance in most of our funds. And in any case where the budget or where we, the council approves a budget that dips into the fund balance, minimum, we have three years to make up or to bring it back to the, the required level. So these are the things that are factored in preparing this budget. Uh, I'll call your attention to the strategic reserve in the report that you have, uh, to the park reserve in the report that you have, uh, also to the risk management fund. So those are probably the items that uh, uh, I look into seriously that I want to bring to the attention of the mayor and council. Also, another major factor that affect this is uh, the outstanding interfund loan that we have. So as you discuss, I know the mayor and council, you are under a lot of pressure for spending. So you need to keep in mind some of these items as you go forward. Park Operation Fund, we have a negative uh, outstanding loan of about 450000 Then Park Construction, we've brought that, uh, as of the end of 2018, uh, we have about 7.4. Uh, if you approve this budget amendment, it will go down to 6.8. Outstanding general obligation bond. So we have some of these items, our community center, you have uh, about 9.9 .9 million there. Uh, target property, about 6 million. And score, about 12.9 million. Just like our mortgage and rent or car loan, these are the things that, you know, when your income comes in, those are the things that are taken <coughs> right off the top. So you need to keep some of these items in mind as we go forward. Uh, uh, for some of those uh, interfund loan, we have, uh, or for the GEO bond, we have uh, annual payment of close to, actually more than two million that we're paying. So this is exhibit B. And the next page, just try to make it a little bit readable. So this is Exhibit B, uh, making sure our fund balance match what it's supposed to be. And, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you have the Performing Heart Center, 447000 That is an interfund loan that we need to pay back. Also right there is the Performing Heart Center, which as I mentioned, 6.8 million. Now, other than that, majority of the other funds are within where they need to be. I think uh, uh, risk management, I think needs to be a little bit higher than it needs to be. Uh, 
for example, the risk management, which is right here, is a little bit uh, over a million. It's supposed to be about 1.2. Uh, so I think those are some of the items. Also, you have our strategic reserve that's supposed to be 3 million. It's about 2.7. Uh, park reserve that's supposed to be 1.2. We are using, and that is what the reserve is set up for to be able to help us in the time of need. But again, based on your policy, if we use it, we need to pay it, bring it back up within three years. If we use 600,000 for, uh, for the uh, TOF rebuild, that means within the next three years, we need to put that $600,000 back in. So that is part of what is funded in this, uh, in this budget. These are the proposed major changes in the general fund. And as I refer to this, these are the major, more than $50,000. There's some other smaller, smaller items that I dealt with. Uh, appraisal for target property, the reason why this makes it to this list, even though it's less than 50,000, uh, 50, is because the budget that I presented to FEDRAC had 120. So I think, and as I mentioned, we have a revised number. So instead of 120, it would be about 20,000. That is the only reason why this 20,000 makes it here. Uh, salary workload study, about 100,000. Uh, and the partial funds, new activities. And I want to you know, let you know that uh, this 339, which is pretty much what we are funding public works out of the general fund, it's still not going to fund the salt and the sand that we need to have in storage. Hopefully, the kind of snow that we got this year, hopefully we won't have that again towards the end of the year. But the reserve of the salt that we use up and the sand needs to be made up. So that is why this is partial. We are not up to where we were as of the beginning of the year. Funding for the IT staff, that is a, a, a full staff and uh, about 20,000 uh, uh, 20, for a temporary employee. This is factoring in that if you were to approve it now, we only have about nine, eight months left. So this is not an annual cost of this position. The same thing for the finance staff. Uh, uh, transportation vehicle for prisoner. We're going to leave score at the end of the year. So this is to be able to fund the vehicle that we will need to transport the inmates. So this needs to be done before the end of the year. And uh, as part of uh, the discussion last year before 2019 and 20 budget was approved, the conclusion of the council was if we are amending the budget, the 51,000 that was taken from the police department will be refunded, and that is what this is. Uh, uh, for 2020, you know, as I pointed out, the funding of our IT staff, that is just for nine, eight months. Now this will be for the full year for those uh, positions, and the same thing for the finance department. So that will be the entire 12 months in the 2020 budget. The items that are in non-general fund, that is like your street, like swim, like uh, read, like uh, uh, Dumas Bay. So we are funding, as I pointed out, that in the interfund loan, the reason why it went from a, a seven point uh, uh, 7 million to 6.8 million is because of the payment of this. We are transferring from REIT to pay down that interfund loan for Performing Health Center. Uh, Saheli, tough replacement, again, the good news is we are paying this out of the reserve. I think the essence of the reserve is for the raining day like this. I think that is one of the best decisions that uh, the mayor and council made several years ago to establish all of this reserve fund. So, but you know, when we use it, we have to build it back up over a period of time. 
so that it would not affect our operation. It is coming out of uh, the reserve. Uh, West Halabosa uh, Brook Lake Connector, that's about 125,000. Pipeline rehabilitation pro projects, 79,000. Comp plan and CIP updates, 73,000. These are all coming out of SWIM fund with no impact on general fund at all. Window replacement at Dumas Bay, 60,000. Again, that is coming out of Dumas Bay Reserve. That is also one of the reserve that was created several years ago. So that would not have any impact on the operation. Uh, renovation of the office area for the suite accommodation. By renovating this area, we'll be able to increase our revenue by renting that place out as time goes by. Uh, replacement car for police, 280,000. That is coming from car replacement reserve in the fleet fund. So it's not a new, uh, it's not new addition to the fleet, it's replacement of the fleet that we currently have that we've contributed the reserve for. Uh, elevator repair for the city hall, which is just right across the city, uh, the, the, uh, across the hall. Uh, that is also coming from the reserve. You know, again, that is uh, the benefit of uh, uh, some of the decisions that you've made in the past. Uh, HVAC City Hall, that is also coming from the reserve. If we didn't have this reserve, then now we will be dipping further into our operation. So that is a uh, 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 quarter main, main door repair. As part of moving out of school, in order to make our courtroom more secure, we need to make some modification to the courtroom. To be able to segregate the inmates from the public, we will need a, uh, maybe about, uh, about 30,000 to do that demarcation. Again, that is coming out of the building reserve, which is a good thing. With a total of a little bit over two million, all of these are non-general fund. And as I highlighted, majority of them are coming from the reserve that you created to be able to deal with situations like this. So that is the end of my presentation. The issue before the council is to consider first reading of the 2019-20 biennium budget amendment, and I will be glad to uh, answer any questions <coughs> that you may have. Council, any questions? Uh, Council Bertrand. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A day, um, can we go back to slide number four? The outstanding general obligation bonds, mm -hmm. um, do you remember how long will it take us to repay all these three bonds? Uh, for, uh, for most of this bond, especially like uh, community center, uh, uh, we probably have about uh, 18 more years to go. Score is about 20 years. Uh, target property, the way we structure that is uh, we can call it in five years, but I think it's for about 15 years. Okay, thank you. And then I have another question, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, slide number eight, I, I believe. Yes, number eight. So um, with this, um, with this amend budget, we partially fund snow activities um, of 339,000. How much more do we need to fully fund them? Uh, how much more can we fund? As of now, I think because we reduce the target appraisal from 120 to 20,000. If I understand your question correctly. I think you're so asking about the snow activities. Yeah, the yeah. snow oh, activities. My concern is if we only partially fund them, okay. uh, will, we, will they have enough money for the next storm? If the storm were to happen now, in talking to a uh, 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 director there, we would not have enough that we had at the beginning of this year. We will have some, but we will not have the same level, but I'll let him. CJ, can you elaborate? Yeah, so the, t 
to get back to where we were in December, um, it was $150,000 in SALT purchases beyond what council was previously made aware of under the emergency purchasing. I believe a day that number was reduced from 150 to 100,000 in what is before council. So that delta is $50,000 to get us back to December levels. Thank you. All right. And uh, okay. And actually, when we first started that uh, snow event, didn't we? Weren't we sitting on a, a, a like five years of of accumulation? Yeah. So we've we've been lucky the last couple of years, where we've we've certainly used salts, but not anywhere to the near level that we had to this year for a significant event. Um, so we've so slowly accumulated salt as well as the spare parts inventory um, and. The number you're seeing before you is not just salt, to be very clear. It is also replenishing light bulbs and wipers and everything else that goes on the trucks to, to keep an operational fleet during a snow event um, that we essentially have no inventory in the yard right now. So, but yes, to answer the mayor's question, that is exactly what happened. We have accumulated supplies over the last several years because we have been lucky and we've been, been able to accumulate them and not need as much as we've been buying um, but we went through all of them plus this year all right okay any other questions okay so in, in a simple term based on what they request they are fifty thousand dollars short all right and we'll look for ways in the meantime to uh to bridge that gap. Councilor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and Dan, I want to thank you for meeting with us individually, just around and being really transparent around our financial situation. I just had a clarifying uh, question around the transportation vehicle um, for prisoners. I know that we have uh, we're going to bring on about three three officers um, for transporting our, our inmates. And is this a shared expense for one car, or is this multiple cars? Just wanted to clarify, Chief. We currently have one uh, transport van that we could use, but we're going to need a second van for 2020. So this is from the replacement reserve. So it's not new money, but we've been collecting in our reserve for another van that we'd like to use that as a transport vehicle. Perfect. Thank you, Chief. Thanks for clarifying. So, so this is just for 2019 and then hopefully adding on for 2020 another vehicle. No, this vehicle will be for when we transition uh, to doing our own transports starting January 2020. We will need them uh, for sometime uh, probably mid-December to start moving prisoners. So we will need the second transport van. So this is for to use in 2020, but we'll start using it in December. Okay. Thank you. And I did want to let the, the public know um, next Tuesday at the Human Services Public Safety Committee, we are going to be talking about the different cost-effective options now that we're leaving score. So I believe there's a number on the table. So Yakima and, and Kent, Issaquah, and, and I think um, Kittias County or, or one of the other counties. So um, just so you all are aware and want to hear what we're thinking. So Great. Thank you very much. We also have our hardworking state representative, Christine Reeves, uh, join us today. Thank you very much for joining us. After working so hard in the legislature, thanks for uh, coming to another meeting. Appreciate all that you're doing down there for us. Uh, and we got some preliminary good news about some stuff in the budget, so thanks for that hard work, too. Okay. Uh, all right, Council, any, uh, Council Mayor Moore. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, a day, um, and, and to the Mayor, uh, thank you. Uh, I know that last year's budget was riveting and extremely exciting and had its curves and turns and ups and downs. Uh, and um, there were some scary moments in there, but we got a budget <laughs> passed. Um, and there were some things that, that were kind of frustrating. And, and I think at this, uh, with this budget uh, adjustments, I, I think the process went a lot better. Uh, there was certainly a lot more communication individually with council members um, early in advance, uh, where we were able to ask all sorts of questions. And I, I really appreciate that a day for you to spend the time to do that. And Mayor, thank you for being proactive on this approach, and I, I hope to see that continue. Um, obviously, you know, in the last budget cycle, we've discussed the importance of IT 
uh, and staffing that, and I think that's really important. I'm glad we're following through on that, as I expected we would. Um, I think this is a, a great step forward. Um, certainly look forward to the next budget discussions to m maintain that and to ensure that we have a healthy IT staff so that our website can be protected, you know, and um, and our city employees can be um, uh, can feel uh, like they can ask for support and actually get support. Uh, so that's really important. And also, um, um, uh, I do want to note that uh, the refunding police overtime. I know that last year uh, we got into a heated uh, and a wonderful discussion and a debate about taking uh, youth funding out of that temporarily, out of that OT. So now I want to make sure that the public is aware that we're putting the money back. Uh, so that is really important for, for people to know that uh, that's exactly what the 51000 is. Um, and a question here. Um, and it's the housing, too. It's the, the youth and the housing. Thank you. Just the, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and so teamwork, I love it. Uh, and so one of the questions I had was, what specific uh, finance staff uh, are you looking to to add in your team? I just wanted, to, I was curious about I, that. Absolutely, thank you. I think uh, with some of uh, the changes and turnover that we've had, if our payroll person were to leave, the way we've lost staff it wouldn't be very pretty because we can delay paying our fender a couple of days. We'll call them, we'll send you a check. Making payment to employees that depend on using their money to pay their mortgage, to pay their car, the idea of making a mistake, the idea of delaying it for a day, it's not something that you want to hear. So what you know, uh, we're doing is funding somebody to be able to back that position up. Should something go wrong, somebody else is ready to train, is doubling the work, is ready to step in and take care of it. Thank that you. is what that will do. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. And I, I too, want to thank you, Dave, for meeting with us. I know you spend a lot of time getting ready for that and talking with us. I just wanted to say that the 51000 was never actually taken out of the police budget because that money still hasn't been given to those groups yet. And I, I think uh, I just want to, you know, thank all of you that we were able to meet. Uh, your comment and suggestion that I took back to the mayor, that he was able to respond, and I think that makes it easier to make sure that the council needs, uh, you know, are considered before this is uh, put together. So thank you for your time. All right, council, any other comments, suggestions, complaints? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we'll do the complaints later. <laughs> Hurry up before somebody thinks of something. <laughs> wow, I wasn't really serious, but uh, okay. Um, all right, would the city clerk, uh, would the deputy city clerk please read the uh, ordinance title? Council Bill 756, 2019 20 budget amendments. An ordinance of the city of Federal Way, Washington relating to amending the 2019 2020 biennial budget. Okay, Councilmember Duclo, do you have a uh, motion? Yeah. Yes, I do. I move to forward the proposed ordinance to the April 16th, 2019 Council meeting for second reading and enactment. Second. second. All right, there's been a motion of multiple seconds. Uh, is there any, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The matter passed unanimously. All right, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, and now for second reading uh, for um, uh, item B, Council Bill 754. Would the Deputy City Clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 754 relating to the 2018 amendments to the Federal Way Comprehensive Plan and Compre Comprehensive Plan map to realign the future extension of South 320th Floor Street further south to connect with Warehouser Way South. An ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington relating to the amendments to the Federal Way Comprehensive Plan amending the Federal Way Comprehensive Plan and approving a city-initiated comprehensive, comprehensive plan amendment to realign the future extension of South 324th Street connect, to connect to Warehouser Way South instead of 32nd Avenue South. All right, to get the conversation started, uh, uh, Council Member Copang, can you make a motion? Yes, I move approval of the proposed ordinance. Second. It's been a motion, a second. Is there any discussion? Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. 
So this has been something that I've thought a lot about over the last couple of weeks. I've talked with, um, with staff and with citizens and uh, with other council members. And um, my main concern is that as we develop on the other side of I-5, we're going to need a north-south road. And whoever put this into the um, plan was thinking of the potential development that will come in that part of the um, in that part of the city. I'm concerned that we don't have in making this decision today in realigning this road and having it drop off onto Warehouser Way. We don't have a really good idea of how much traffic is going to be on Warehouser Way and how that could then go out to 320th as, and people then could go up through 320th and then go on to um, 32nd as it's built eventually. Um, I'm concerned about the process. And this isn't about jobs. It's about an alignment on a road. I'm concerned about the long-range transportation plans in the city and for that part of the town. I'm concerned about the, um, as IRG develops their property and has traffic that, you know, we have, uh, staff has some numbers from IRG. But I'm concerned that we're going to have a real traffic concern over there and that we really do need a north-south road. So to me, this isn't about jobs. Uh, when I've talked to people who live over there and who work over there, it's about traffic. It's about the process and it's about transparency in the city. And so um, those are my concerns. Thank you. All right, Council on the other, Council Mayor Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do want to, to thank my colleagues on land use for having the special meeting last week with the Planning Commission and, and Council Member uh, Copang for chairing that. Um, I, I think that we were able to engage in a, in a good dialogue with them and um, hear their concerns. Um, I also have some concerns around the design process, but I think that um, you know it was a unanimous vote from the Planning Commission originally, and then last week was about 50-50, I would say. Um, but ultimately, we have to make the call on it, and I think um, there wasn't enough to overturn um, proceeding with the amendment. So I do agree, uh, Deputy Mayor, that we need to be involved and weigh in on that design process, but I think um, for now, I think we need to proceed with the, the amendment to get things going in that process of, of um, talking with uh, um, Public Works and, and EJ and his team and, and DeVita as well. So, thank you. All right, Council, any other comments? Uh, oh, Council, uh, Council Member. Uh, Can I okay. Go Trent. Go Trent. It's fine. All right. Uh, very polite of you both. It reminds me of those members. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> um, so, Council Member Tran, Council Member uh, Copain. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Council Member um, Copain. Um, <coughs> For me, this, this was a very difficult um, process to go through. Um, and I remember that Council Member Johnson and I were the one who asked for a delay so that we have a chance to talk to um, and listen um, for input from uh, the, the uh, planning commissioners. Um, and I already share with you why uh, that is important to me because where I came from, uh, people don't have a voice. Um, the government make other decisions and people just have to live with it. Um, and that's why I escaped from that environment and be here. So when I heard uh, the allege or imply whatever you call it, the company trying to put a pressure on our commissioners to vote in a certain way, 
um, I became concerned. Um, and, and, and that is why that was the main reason why I asked for the delay so that I can hear directly from the commissioners. Um, I agree with uh, Council Member Johnson uh, that during that meeting, um, most if not all commissioner did speak out and uh, if my count was correct, I believe there was five of them um, said that they did not feel any pressure uh, or threat uh, from um, the company or from staff and I'm very happy to hear that. Um, the job, the potential jobs to the city um, to me is very important. Um, this is high paying jobs and uh, we do need those jobs for our people in, in this city. Um, and DeVita is, 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 is a great company, uh, very respectful company, a very well respected company. Um, and uh, like I said before, we need more uh, of those type of companies uh, move into our city. Um, I think my personal feeling about this is that this whole thing could be avoided if um, staff or whoever make the presentation to the commissioners or to the council um, done it in a certain way or give us, you know, a head <coughs> start, um, or work with us, perhaps maybe one-on-one, -on -one, for example, I think we could have avoid all this drama going on. Um, but at the end of the day, I have to think about what I'm about to do and how does that impact the city and the benefits to the people in this city. And for that, I am ready to vote today. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Stephanie Dawson. Oh, go ahead. oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. No, we did that, didn't we? We let it. <laughs> Council Member, okay. Council Member Stephanie Dawson, then, then Mark, who's just a, a gentleman. Thank you very much. And I, obviously, am suffering memory issues. Uh, Council Member Stephanie Dawson. Thank you, Mark, for letting me jump in. Um, I too had um, struggled about this and thinking a lot about the implication um, on whether or not to um, to have Davida build their um, their facility there. And so, um, thank you to staff members who really informed me, and then th also thank you to the council members and then the reading. Um, and so, we've always talked about economic development in our city, and then. Um, talking about the university initiative that we're going to have here and the jobs that this is actually building. And my, my um, question was around what type of jobs they're bringing, and they're bringing professional jobs because um, I am interested in, I, you know, people's um, to be self-sufficient, and so they should not be working low-wage jobs. And, you know, of course we do, but and then not having benefits uh, where people have to work two, three jobs to even survive. And so um, I was pleased to hear that this is professional jobs and also the possibility or opportunities for the university initiative to possibly or, you know, bring employees to the fold to work at DeVita. So um, there's a multiplier effect and it's very beneficial to our city. Um, and so um, that's, that's where I stand now on this issue. So thank you. All right, thank you. And now for our patient, Council yeah. Member Copang. You know, I uh, I think for me the decision was actually a very easy one, um, but I had the benefit of having a lot of information and being involved in this from land use from the very time I started on council. Um, but I think that one of the things that as a council member that each one of us need to do is respect the process and allow uh, council members to come to their own decisions. And uh, I think, uh, you know, whether we agree or disagree, um, we've, had, we've got a chance to go through the process. 
Um, I wanted to thank the staff in particular for um, the work they did. I think with the comprehensive plan, really what we're looking at is, is getting an east-west connector uh, from, from the west side of the freeway to the east side of the freeway. And that's the, really the most important part of that. I understand uh, Council Member Hahn, or Deputy Mayor Honda's concerns about the east, the north-south. Um, the truth is we, can find, we could find capacity um, on Warehouser Way north of 324th if we needed to. So we could address that. And obviously there's issues with north of 320th, how that's addressed. We'll have to come up with some solutions. Um, but that is uh, 10, 15, maybe 20 years away. Um, what we have right now is a, a, a road that is, is very expensive. It's actually $132,000 to run, $132 million in today's dollars to run from the west side of, of I-5 to Warehouser Way through the proposed roundabout uh, onto 323rd. Um, change the alignment to, so it's just 324th goes straight, actually save the city $7 million or save whoever builds it $7 million, because actually it's going to be a DOT project. And I think for those that know state, state funding and understand state projects, if you give them an option of saving $7 million, um, they'll find a way to, to save the $7 million. So the likelihood of us actually building the road the way we actually have in the comp plan, I think is remote anyway. Um, but uh, the fact that not only do we gain the, uh, the additional the savings from the realignment, we also gain a, um, a lot that has high value now. Um, it goes from being a lot that we would have to buy as a city if we were to insist on that alignment, and uh, we would lose the usefulness of that lot. Um, we would lose the opportunity to have DeVita basically spend $80 million, according to uh, um, uh, Director T Tim Johnson, on, on improving that property. Um, so we go from having a lot that we're not collecting revenue on if we have to condemn it for use for public use to a lot that actually is part of a development um, that is substantially improved, improving our tax base. Um, this council, not the previous council, this council communicated to our citizens that our number one priority was, was creating a sustainable, more sustainable revenue source. This council also has their priority said that we want to see economic development occur in the city. Um, the DeVita project hits both very well. It is a, they're a Fortune 500 company. Uh, they're a good corporate citizen. They're bringing great jobs. Um, all those things together uh, make this to me a very easy decision. There are more benefits that I could list I, I don't want to bore everybody. I think we, we, we start to pile on at some point. But um, the truth is, is this is exactly what our city needs. And we are going to see growth. Um, we are positioned for growth as a city, being in the Puget Sound area anyway. We can hold it off. Uh, we can say we don't want this type of growth or that type of growth. But in the end, we're going to get the growth we don't want. Um, this is growth we do want. We want to see jobs come. We want to see professional jobs come. We want to see more professional jobs come. Um, as uh, uh, Director Johnson reminded me, um, when one Fortune 500 company comes to an area, other Fortune 500 companies or other large companies will follow suit. It just, it's just the way they cluster together. So um, we are sending a message to the development community. We're sending a message to employers that we are a city that understands the need to accommodate requests. And in this, in this request to me, it's clearly in the city's best interests. And I can say to any other business that comes to Federal Way, if you make a request of us that is in our best interest to accommodate, we'll find a way to accommodate it. But we are not going to um, become subservient to business interests at the expense of our city's interests. And I think that's, that's a line that, as a council member, I'm not interested in crossing. So anyway, um, that's all I had. All right, thank you. That's where I do close. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, this is a great opportunity for us. The DeVita is a Fortune 500 company coming to Federal Way. Uh, maybe some of its employees will actually move here to Federal Way, but the B&O taxes we will get will, will help our revenue streams, and I can't think of a nicer company to be coming in 
into that area. I know it's hard for some of the people that have lived there all of their lives and actually worked for Weyerhaeuser, but it reminds me of the people that lived uh, down across from the, uh, the, the amusement park on that street, and they had single family homes, and there was a big lot at the end, and they made a baseball field out of it for their kids to play on. They didn't own the property. And then whoever owned it either sold it or decided to develop it, and they were up in arms. But they didn't own the property. The people, if they wanted to do something, they should have bought the property, but they didn't. So I think bringing DeVita in might be the start of a new era for the city of Federal Way. And I, I want us to do as much as we can to help them get here. Very good. Thank you. Councilor Moore? You know, it's, uh, Mr. Mayor, I like to practice my listening skills. But I feel like it's important to, to comment on this topic. Um, you know, I, I appreciate everything that our uh, my colleagues have stated. I think um, it adds a lot of value uh, to to this conversation and uh, hopefully to the outcome that we're going to see. Um, and I think for me, um, I've heard of all sides. I've gone to the land use and transportation committee meetings, um, and um, I think for me, when I step back and look at the big picture, and if you look at our social media sites, Federal Community Watch and other sites, everybody's screaming at the fact that they want more police officers. Everybody. It's my job to listen to that and to find out alternative methods to get to that outcome. And if we can add more jobs, if we can add uh, more companies to come into our community that's going to give us the revenue that's so desperately needed for us to be able to fund our police department so that we can fund youth development programs so we can fund other necessities that's what's so important that's what this vote uh, means to me and that's why i'll be voting yes uh, to this thank you all right council any other discussion all right hearing none there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. City, Deputy City Clerk? Deputy Mayor Honda? Uh, nay. Council Member Asefa Dawson? Aye. Council Member Johnson? Aye. Council Member Tran? Aye. Council Member Popang? Aye. Council Member Moore? Aye. Council Member Duclo? Aye. Uh, the motion passes six to one. All right. Uh, I want to say, uh, as Brian, I know your son turns uh, turns 18 tonight, and uh, and you're here because this the, that last item was was that important to you. Uh, now it's time to go where you're where you're really needed, and so you're not going to be needed for this next item. So, uh, thank you for being with us uh, tonight on this important night for you. Wish your son happy birthday for us. Okay. Item C, Council Bill 755. Would the Deputy City Clerk please read the ordinance title? Council Bill 755, relating to the 2018 amendments to the, Fed, to the Federal Way Comp Plan, Comp Plan Map, and Zoning Map for the Milton Road Area Legislative Comp Plan Amendment and Rezone. An ordinance of the City of Federal Way, Washington, relating to the amendments to the Federal Way Comprehensive Plan, amending the Federal Way Comprehensive Plan, Comprehensive Plan Map, and zoning map and approving a city initiated comprehensive plan amendment and legislative rezone of 56.06 acres located north of South 376th Street, east of Interstate 5, from single family medium density RS35, one unit per 35,000 square feet, to single family high density RS7.2, one unit per 7,200 square feet. All right. Uh, to start off the conversation, we're on second reading now. Councilmember Coping, do you have a motion? I move approval of the proposed ordinance. Second. It's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilmember Tran. No, oh, I'm ready to vote. You're just getting ready to vote. Is there anybody who'd like to comment or uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The matter passed unanimously. Council reports. Councilmember Sepidawson. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, just a couple quick things. Um, I had the opportunity uh, last Friday to visit the Federal Way Senior Center. So it was nice to see the newly renovated kitchen. So thanks to our state delegation for 
I think it was last year's state delegation to um, provide that. And I also visited yesterday the Truman Career Academy and talked with some youth there. Um, and I asked both groups the same question, and, and that is, um, what would it look like uh, for you to, to feel supported in federal way, or, or what are you hoping to get? And, and all three of them had some version of the same response, and so that's just feeling connected and, and valued. Um, and so um, I'm really happy about our senior commission and, and that we're going to be discussing that as a council and the mission and, and what it's going to be comprised of and, and all the exciting things around that, um, as well as what's happening with our youth. So I just wanted to, to say that. Um, also, just a quick announcement. Um, I think the PAC will be uh, marketing an event on Saturday, June 22nd. So I know Councilmember Moore knows about it as well. Um, but it's going to be an event um, provided by Brave New World. And I'm going to be helping with them to do a career expo. And so there's going to be a youth component in the early afternoon and adult component in the, in the evening. And so basically some of our local businesses um, like Costco and, and, and Starbucks um, are going to be offering jobs to um, folks in the community as well as providing a resource fair and also have a um, concert component. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to, to that event. So Saturday, June 22nd, um, I think the tickets will go on sale um, on the PAC's website next week. So just a quick announcement around that. Thanks. Okay, Councilmember Tran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so um, last week, uh, my uh, family took my daughter to New York and Connecticut so that she can visit her um, school. But um, what I want to share with you is that I was very impressed with both New Haven City and City of New York in terms of the homeless people. Um, we spent about six, five to six hours, you know, walk around Times Square and Central Park in New York, um, and I did not see any person that asking for money on the street. That was really surprised me. And then I look around even in the Central, uh, Central Park area, I did not see any tent, um, you know, campsite. So I don't know what they did. Uh, maybe they have some type of system that taking care of the homeless people there. Um, I, I have every intention to dig more information because you know, going to Seattle, for example, I mean, we see people, you know, camp everywhere. And then before we, you know, arrive in New York, I was thinking the same thing, you know, this is a major city, I am going to see, you know, a lot of people on the street and all that. But I was so surprised. There's nobody there. You know, no homeless people there. So I just want to share that. Great. Thank you. Thank Good you. feedback. Interesting. Councilor Copang. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to uh, just talk about a couple of heroes I have in the community, uh, Shelly Pauls and uh, Cheryl Hurst. Uh, Shelly has uh, been instrumental in uh, um, getting community members activated in doing things to make a difference in the city. And uh, I attended a meeting uh, last uh, couple of weeks ago about the Blueberry Farm. And the Blueberry Farm is down by uh, um, Brook Lake. And it's a park that, or it's, that was basically uh, in disrepair. As a commissioner, a parks commissioner years ago, I remember looking at the Blueberry Farm and saying, why is that even there? But uh, it had a long history in the city. And uh, there had been pe people that had actually remember going there and picking blueberries. And you know, you, I started hearing about it. It's like, wow, that's something that would be nice for us to say. Well, the good news is, is that there's a group of, of concerned citizens. Don is right here, one of our, our, uh, um, our uh, parks commissioners. Um, that said let's let's work together as a community and let's make a difference we don't need to we can partner with the parks department and not complain that they're not doing it but actually say how can we help you make it happen and i got to tell you um the parks uh employees uh the director jason gerwin to a man are like oh my gosh we want to partner with this group of people to make this park better and you know what it's amazing what work has already been done there and it's just a little bit at a time but again it's about the community seeing a need and partnering um, with the employees here to make to make a difference and uh, again it, it can't happen without community involvement it can't happen without a staff that's willing to uh, spend a Saturday uh, spend extra time 
um, in the city on their day off in some cases um, to make sure that the, the volunteers get the support that they need. So again, that's just a huge kudo. I know they ended up staying uh, after hours to meet with this subcommittee and talk about a plan. And the plans look great. And they're going to work on getting funding together for this. So in the end, we've got, we're going to have a city park that is um, really a, a product of <coughs> years of commitment by the city, but also a product of a community that's come together to make it better. So that's huge. And I tell you, as a council member, that's stuff that makes my heart sing. Um, the other thing is uh, the March of Diapers event that Cheryl Hurst has put on. Years ago, she saw a need um, for diapers uh, for members of the community. And uh, um, she actually started her own charity, uh, her own 501c3 called Do the Right Thing. She was so passionate about doing this. And basically, she enlisted the help of people. And the first year, I don't know how many, she, how many diapers she got the first year, but it's probably like 30 or 40,000. She got so, somewhere around 60,000 last year. She set a goal for 100,000 this year. And I haven't heard the official numbers, but my understanding is she probably exceeded that goal. And it's all about <clears throat> one person planting a seed, but a community capturing that passion and partnering with her. Um, the cool thing about this is it's actually um, Edgewood has participated in it, Milton has participated in it, um, Kent has participated, and Federal Way. So it's really a, almost it's become a South King County, but it's from one person with a great idea. So again, I just uh, really, uh, my hat's off to uh, both these ladies and the spark that they've uh, created in our community. And it just, uh, just really, um, just really a neat thing. And I really appreciate it for both of them, appreciative of both of them. All right, Councilmember Moore. Well, how do I follow that, Mr. Mayor? Uh, it, it is really great to, to hear about uh, incredible people making a, a ripple of effect, you know, um, in our communities. And I think um, sometimes that's that's not um, celebrated enough. Uh, and so uh, I appreciate Cheryl's efforts, and I, uh, Shelley is just amazing. Um, and I was happy to see that the city of Fedaway also uh, played a role in uh, donating diapers along with our staff and and uh, I'm sure all of uh, most of us if not all of us on the council uh, so it's really exciting so uh, hopefully with my picture in the diapers that doesn't mean it's an announcement so don't uh, don't uh, confuse anything with that uh, but um, I, I do want to share <laughs> took a little bit of time uh, anyways uh, You're not pregnant. I'm not pregnant, for the record. <laughs> it's always good to smile, you know. So just to be clear, <laughs> just to be clear, uh, all those we could be making history, you know. <laughs> Finally, federal. Okay. Um, so uh, on on sad news here, um, we we all got an email um, with regards to the shooting. Um, on the 336th at Safeway. And um, this one hits home for me. Uh, this one hits home for me just because it affects a, a dear friend and, a, and it affects uh, one of our own commissioner's uh, family. And uh, I don't want to mention names right now just because I know we're being televised. Um, but, you know, it, it's really interesting because... Um, we, we know that it's a young person, um, and um, it shouldn't happen. Uh, flat out shouldn't happen. Um, and, you know, we live in a world where uh, this is a very a heated type of debate of what to do with guns and whatnot, but a young person should not have gun, a gun. And the question that popped up in my mind as I was conversing with this commissioner is, why does that person have a gun? How did that person get a gun? And what happened? Where was the pieces that had fallen? And um, as, a, as a leader in our community, um, this makes me angry. I don't care about, I, I obviously care about the fact that I want responsible gun owners to have their guns. Responsible gun owners. But uh, there's a lot of work for us to do. And I think as soon as I found about this information, and I appreciate the chief briefing us, the, um, you know, I think this is an issue I'm going to be thinking about quite a bit. 
Um, and I think um, it's not okay for me to, to see a young adult, an adolescent, having access to some sort of a gun. And when it hits home, uh, it's a whole different story. Uh, and um, we, need to, we need to go after this. We need to uh, uh, do what we can. Uh, it, it's not okay. It's not okay, and I don't care about Republicans or Democrats and their viewpoints of this issue. I don't care about that anymore. What I care about is a youth should not have a gun, access to a gun, period. Should not. Should not. I don't, you know, if you're a responsible gun owner and you're an adult, good. That's fine. But a youth uh, and a young adult that's less than 21 years old should not have a gun. And so this is something I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be conversing uh, because it is not okay. Uh, it's just simply not. Um, on to other topic. Um, uh, Councilor uh, Tran, I appreciated what you just stated uh, in your observation with New York um, about homelessness. Um, I have yet to watch the, the uh, show that uh, Eric Johnson had put together. It took him over a year, as I understand, in putting this uh, series together. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Seattle's dying. Seattle's dying. How do you forget that name? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's a big, beyond of a crisis of an issue. And so uh, I know that our homeless task force has uh, done uh, research and has put together a report. Uh, and now, Mr. Chair uh, of Parks and Human Services, Chairman Johnson, I, I do request that we add this to the agenda um, and so that we can uh, take that uh, report and take uh, and look at it and, and vote on it. I don't think, uh, if I'm mista not mistaken, we, uh, council has not taken action on that. And I think we're at a time where we need to start uh, showing compassion but being aggressive. Uh, panhandling, again, not okay. Uh, it takes a toll on our city. Uh, you look, I'm the chair of our, tur our tourism committee. When we have guests coming in, that they're seeing panhandlers left and right, and it's gotten worse over the years. Councilmember Tran was a guest in New York. Didn't see a single panhandler. How about that? So we need to look at the policies of what other cities are doing, challenge the law, and find out what is an avenue that we can do it because other cities are doing it. Other cities are doing it. And somehow we're, we're afraid to take that step. I know we're being cautious. I know we're being respectful of the law, but the question becomes, how do other cities do it, and how, and how do we not solve this crisis on panhandling? And I know I've suggested signage. Uh, Winco has it, where they post it on their property saying, don't give to a panhandler, instead give to uh, ch a charity. And I think, I'm, I know I've talked to this issue with the mayor, I know he's encouraged me to talk it with the, the council, but it's a conversation I, I want to have in our committee. Uh, and see where that goes. Uh, and so I urge for, for a solution like that as a starting point. Um, and lastly, but not least, and I apologize for the time, uh, but because we started earlier with our council meeting, that means we have more time. Uh, and so... Uh, I will take your Bridget, thing away from you, and then you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't take that. Uh, but uh, Bridget, um, uh, as it was stated earlier, is one of my mentees, and I, I tell you, I am absolutely proud of her. Uh, Becoming an um, uh, intern for U.S. Representative Adam Smith is, is not an easy task. Uh, it's a difficult interview. Uh, lots of questions are coming that you have no idea what's coming at you at. Um, and so I just want to say, again, publicly, uh, congratulations. I know that I, I sent her an, uh, an email uh, about two weeks ago ask, asking if you had gotten it, and, and I'm really pleased to, uh, to share with everybody one, once again that she has gotten that internship and I'm, I think you're going to be starting in May, uh, which is perfect timing. Uh, also a shout out to State Representative Pellicciotti, Reeves and Senator Wilson for sp taking the extra time and spending um, and having a conversation with uh, a young, uh, fearless up and coming uh, leader. Uh, and then a huge thank you to Justice Steve Gonzalez. Um, I'll tell you, trying to schedule a meeting on, on a whim uh, is, is not easy and he was willing to take that and I just Really appreciated him taking the time to meet uh, with another uh, amazing uh, future attorney, uh, Bridget. So uh, good work. Keep it up. Uh, and good job during the public comment time. Look forward to seeing another public comment 
uh, in April and two weeks from now. With that, thank you so much. That's a Duclo. Yeah, this was not in my committee, but my, my neighbor brought, brought it to my attention. Um, it was in the Transportation Committee. It has to be with the, uh, the fine particles that we get from all of the jets flying across and around our city. And um, I, I'm really concerned about this. It's, a, it's really a health problem. And what really gets me is because tomorrow um, I usually go up to Town Square Park and walk a mile or a mile and a half because I don't have the dog. He goes to daycare. And I'm there one day I was there. It takes me about 20 minutes to do that. I counted 10 planes going over that field. And Town Square Park in the summertime and on school breaks has a lot of children, young children in it. And we're getting particles from those planes that are physically damaging, especially to young children, not so much us old guys because we've gotten so many things that it, it can't bother us. But it really concerns me that the airport is uh, allowing this to happen. Um, and I really think that we as a, as a council should, should look into this and get some, um, they're, they're supposed to, I thought somebody was gonna be here tonight, but they're not, they're, they're supposed to be doing a study on the particles and the study is supposed to go as far as ocean shores uh, to find out how far from the ocean, you know, is the ocean getting it or are we getting most of it? Um, but I really think this is something that we need to take an interest in and we need to find more, more information about and we need to take a position on it. So I hope we can get something between now and the next meeting and start to really discuss it much more because we have a lot of children that play in there in the summer and I would hate for them to grow up with something that's been caused by this. So thank you all. All right, thank you. Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank staff for making it possible for me to participate in meetings last week while um, I was in Iowa with my grandchildren. It was their spring break. And Council Member Trent, um, I don't see homeless people in Iowa either. And when I've asked why, I have been told it's the weather. It's either super cold or it's really, really hot. And it's just not conducive to uh, people living in a tent or living on a sidewalk, either summer or winter. So um, that's that's what I've been told. I don't know how true that is, but you know the the problem seems to be bigger on on the west coast from California to to Washington of homelessness, and our weather is nicer than other parts of the country almost all the time. So that that could be part of it. It probably is part of it. But thank you to staff because without technology, I couldn't have participated and I'm very glad to have been able to participate. This Seroptimist, of which I'm a member, which is a, a club for women here in Federal Way, it's an international club, is holding their annual luncheon on April 27th at Twin Lakes Country Club. Dorothy Wilham, who is a writer for the Tacoma News Tribune, will be our speaker. We are raising funds for a program that supplies music instruments to senior citizens and people who are disabled and to form bands. There is a, um, a group that's going around the country helping senior centers form bands with senior citizens, especially those who have some form of dementia. Uh, music seems to be able to calm them down, to help them remember things, and overall make their life better. And so we would like to get some money to give to the Federal Way Seniors um, Center to get a band going there. And so anybody come, if you want to buy a ticket, let me know, I can hook you up with a ticket. And it is in the afternoon from 11 to 2, it is the luncheon. I had the opportunity a few weeks ago to volunteer at the 2019 STEM Expo at um, TAF. And I um, am not a, uh, an engineer, <laughs> but I was put in with a group of judges who were all engineers, and I, I, I learned a lot from our, our students. We had high school students. They were uh, 10th and 11th graders, and they did simply amazing projects that 
they're going to continue working on this year and come back next year with an even better project. And, uh, you know, this school was, it was a Saturday, and the kids were, had worked all year on this, on their projects, and it was simply a, it was amazing. We had judges from Seattle, from Amazon, from all sorts of companies, Microsoft, Warehouser, Boeing. We had young engineers coming to be judges and older engineers and people who weren't in engineers. And uh, I think the kids learned a lot from, from those folks, and I know I learned a lot, but I'd like to thank um, the principal, Pam Tuggle, there for inviting me to be a judge, and I hope that she invites me back next year, because I think I did okay. <laughs> I, am ha I have the opportunity right now to be working with an 11th grader at Christian Faith Center. She chose me to be her senior project, and um, she wants to get into politics and perhaps become a lawyer. And this project will take from, from now until her senior year, spring of her senior year. But in one of our conversations, she had been reading some stuff on Facebook. And if anyone reads Facebook, you just want to kind of slam it down and say, oh, you know, it, it's so negative and it's so full of, uh, you know, things that are somewhat true, somewhat untrue. Um, sometimes absolutely not true and um, she said to me one afternoon why do people call federal way felony way i love living here i've never felt unsafe here and she said i'd like to study crime and how crime is affecting federal way and how crime is affecting the youth in federal way so that's going to be our project um, she's working out the details now with her teachers, and I will probably be requesting help from our staff, especially our police department and, our, and the courts, to help her along. But it'll be fascinating when she comes up with the final project to see what our youth feel about crime in federal way and, and um, any ideas that she might have. I think it's fascinating. And I'd like to thank Sound Transit for coming here. And what I will say to the mayor and to staff and to council is we have a lot of work to do. And we have a little bit of time to do it. So um, let's get busy and let's make sure that downtown is the downtown that we want and not the downtown that they're going to give us. Because it's our downtown. We need to be in control. And we need to be looking at our zoning. We need to be looking at our plans. And we need to be doing it now, not later that they're starting they're starting now and we we need to be um really really busy so thank you very much and i know staff is really busy but we have work to do as a council so that's music to my ears thank you yeah we'll start tomorrow morning okay okay <laughs> councilor Trent. um sorry um but i do have one important things that i have to do and that is to thank mayor deputy mayor member of this council and Sherilyn, if she's still listening, uh, to um, for the recognition of uh, Myra today. That was wonderful. That was great. So thank you. That was really nice. Thank you for bringing that yeah, to our attention. You. I really appreciate that. And thank you for Jesse for asking her to sing. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, smart she, move. She can come every single meeting. Yeah, exactly. Um, Councilman Marissa, something else. Yeah, um, I forgot to mention that the port is doing an internship for um, for uh, high school students, $16 an hour. They have about 70 openings. So um, hopefully the school board or uh, people involved in Federway School District get to hear this. But I'll also reach out to them. But I just wanted to share that information. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, a couple I just wanted to make take this opportunity to mention one more thing. Um, it, you may have seen the obituary in uh, the the, the uh, um, mirror, but a uh, good friend of the city, Jack Butcher, passed away um, in his home uh, peacefully. Um, but uh, a good friend, a good a supporter of the arts here in the city, a long-term Rotarian, and uh, really a true pillar in our community. And uh, he's survived by his wife and his, uh, his wife, Linda, and his daughter, Michelle, and 
son Derek um, and his wife Mary. But uh, again, great, great family, and uh, he's going to be missed. But I just, just thought it was worthy of the recognition. So thank you. Yeah, he was a one of a kind yes. and a real gentleman. <coughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Great meeting. With that, we are adjourned. Yes, eight o'clock.